starting the conversation. Welcome to the SPSJ podcast. Well, hello and welcome to this part four of our series in Advent, showing Jesus is Lord in our care. Today, we're going to be focusing on transformational care through the story of Mary and bringing the future into the present. Our Bible readings today are from Luke chapter one and Revelation chapter 21. Hello everybody, it's great to be sharing with you again today on this Christmas Eve of 2023. Where has the year gone? Well, I want to start by uh, sharing this verse with you. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Those are words that were written around the turn of the second century that are not only still relevant today, but desperately needed in our nation and in our world. Today we're finishing off our four-part sermon series looking at showing Jesus Lord in our care. This latest series has itself been the fourth part of our series throughout the year where we've been exploring our tagline that we have here at SBSJ which is showing Jesus is Lord in our worship, witness, prayer and care. And so throughout this year we've been going through each of what those things means. We started by looking at our worship, which we said was to be God-focused, relational, communal, and with our whole life set apart for God. Then we looked at uh, our witness, recognising that we are commissioned to go and make disciples, that we are carriers of hope with Jesus living in us, that we should be united in mind and spirit, and that we are empowered to do what we do by the Holy Spirit. Then we looked at prayer, that we are totally dependent on Jesus, that we should be expectant of God working. We should be thankful at all times because of what we have in Jesus and that we are to be selfless, seeking God's will for all people. This latest series has then explored how our care is to be sacrificial, that we are to be good stewards of what God has given us. And then last week, I spoke about the big picture of caring for the world that God has made. And so to finish everything off that we've been thinking about this year, today we are thinking about transformation. Today is also the last Sunday in Advent, where we remember Mary, the mother of Jesus. In our reading, we heard the words from the angel as he told Mary what is to happen. How easy uh, was it for Mary to feel overwhelmed, scared, How many questions must Mary have had at that time? But in a heartbeat, her life was suddenly transformed by this baby. Thinking of Mary and a newborn baby, it reminds me of a story of a man that suddenly found himself looking after his newborn son. Soon after his wife had left, the baby started to cry. And the father did everything he could think of to do but the baby just wouldn't stop crying finally the dad got so worried he decided to take the baby to a doctor and after the doctor listened to the father and all that he had done to get the baby to stop crying the doctor began to examine the baby's ears then his chest and then down to the nappy area when he undid the nappy he found that it was indeed full Here's the problem, the doctor said. He needs a change. Well, the father was very confused by this, and he said to the doctor, but the box the nappies came in said it was good for up to £10. Well, that's a lovely image for you, isn't there, Uh, as we go through Christmas. But as human beings, we needed change because we were stuck in our own mess. The whole message of Christmas is that of Jesus coming down to earth, being born as one of us, joining us in the mess of this world, and then dying to take all that mess, all the sin on himself, and in rising, offering us new life, giving us the hope that our situations we are in can be transformed. 
We have spent the last few weeks thinking of very practical ways that we are to offer care to people. But today is reminding us of the most important thing that we can ever share with someone. And that is the truth of what Jesus has done for them. Because if we don't change, then we stay in the mess that we are in. We can try getting a new job or a new house, maybe moving to a new city, starting a new relationship, or maybe deciding to get a healthier lifestyle. And some of those things, they might be good for us to do. But is that really all that there is in life? Remember the words of Jesus in Mark chapter 7, starting at verse 14. It says this, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it, goes not, it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. He went on. What comes out of a person is what defiles them. From, for it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. We have to deal with those things inside of us if we want to see real, genuine, transformational change. That list that Jesus gives us there, we see all over our world, don't we? I'm sure you can think of many people that might have popped into your head just as I was reading it. It rips communities apart, rips families apart. It is dividing nations at the moment. We need real transformational change. And that has to start with us. That is the message that the Bible tells us. Psalm 51 sets us this example. It says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast on me your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. It continues, You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. Or as Paul puts it in his letter to the Romans, he says that a person is not a Jew who is only one outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart, by the Spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. In a heartbeat, Mary's life was transformed. And Jesus wants to transform our life too, starting with our hearts. In our second reading from Revelation chapter 21, we see a vision of something that looks very different to our current reality. If you continue reading the passage and into chapter 23, we we see this new heaven and a new earth, a place where all the tears of the oppressed and the grieving will be wiped away. A place where there is true justice, no hiding place for lies or self-seeking ambition. A place where everything is made new. A place where God can dwell with his people again. Doesn't that sound amazing? Uh, Especially when contrasted with everything we see in our news at the moment. We really long to see that day. One phrase that can be used is is Maranatha at this time of year. And Bishop Richard explained to us that Maranatha is this kind of longing of a cry that that says, come, Lord Jesus, come. We, We desperately need you because we can't continue in this mess that we're in. Come, Lord, come. Well, that's the point of this, the last of our points in our vision as a church. We don't have to wait to see glimpses of that kingdom right now, right here. The whole of our vision is to remind us of who God is. 
of what we already have in Christ right now. If we can only do, as Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, to not conform ourselves to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, then, then he says we will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And God's will is to bring that certain future reality that awaits all of God's children into this present age. In Luke chapter 4, at the beginning of his ministry, we see Jesus going into a temple. He sits and the scroll of the prophet of Isaiah is handed to him. Unrolling it, he finds the place where it's written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolls up the scroll, gives it back to the attendant and sits down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue, they're fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, not tomorrow, not one day in the future, but today. And that's our heart for all that we do in our care. It's not just about providing for the physical needs but having that passion deep down inside to see genuine, real, lasting, transformational change. That's what God desires in making all things new. Now, if you would say you're a follower of Christ, then let's show that Jesus is Lord through our care, by having sacrificial hearts in all that we do, by being good stewards of all that we have, by remembering the big picture of the world that we live in, and by longing, desperately longing, to see God's kingdom in all its fullness with the transformation of all things and bringing that reality into the present. If you're watching this and you're in desperate need of transformation in an area of your life right now, maybe you are really worried about this Christmas period, about what might happen, what it might bring, then I want you to know today that God is here. That's the message of Christmas. The light came down into the darkness. And God is waiting for you. Cry out to God in prayer. Because he is faithful. He is trustworthy and true. And please know that you do not have to go through whatever it is alone. That's why God's given us the church. To be there to support one another. And it's what... Um, our society, which was founded upon Christian values, is all about. That's why we have emergency services. That's why we have many charities that exist who are ready to be there for you, to support you. Please do reach out to somebody if you're struggling. Well, let me just pray for us all now as we finish. Loving God, thank you that you did not leave us alone in the mess. But you sent your only son, Jesus, down to us to live as one of us, to take all of the sin and evil of this world onto his shoulders, then to rise again as king of kings, making transformation possible for all who call on his name. Give us the courage and the strength to call on Jesus' name when we need help. And this Christmas, help us to be there for others, bringing the light of Christ into every situation. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas day uh, and Christmas period and I shall be uh, with you again on New Year's Eve. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope this episode has got you thinking. And please share this conversation with someone as we continue to learn and grow together. We look forward to you joining us again next time.